Uh, so how are you able to be so thorough in getting all of the footage that you found? Um, I think it's the, yeah, perseverance. Mm -hmm. Two years to make the movie, and I think a good part of that two years was just waiting <laughs> for footage to come. Um, and then, you know, we had a couple researchers, and we would just look for footage, that was just their job. Um, so usually it's not as much getting the footage that takes so long, it's waiting to figure out who owns it, and who you have to sort of clear it through, um, but it's a long, a long process. Which of the information that came out during the making of the film was the most surprising to you personally? Um, I have to start with the brain, the information about the brain and how there's an entire, you know, part of the brain that they have that we don't even have and we can't even identify because we don't even have it and we've never seen it before. That that completely sort of shocked me. Um, I also think the, there's a couple things, you know, the whales fighting and just constantly kind of, the whale on whale aggression, that's just a constant undercurrent at that park, you know, every day, every week, just fighting for dominance, because, you know, as they say in the movie, in the wild they can exit the scene, and in fact, they just do, you know, they just sort of swim by each other, and pods swim by each other, you know, even if they're going for the same food, um, they really sort of don't bother each other much, and, and you know, 12, a 12,000 pound animal vying for dominance constantly with another 12,000 pound animal, that's just kind of a nightmare situation, so that shocked me too. Uh, so SeaWorld seems to have its own team of tobacco lawyers. Um, how would you say credible are they in the larger scientific community? In fact, I think a couple of their tobacco lawyers showed up at one of the, the uh, festivals, festival Q&As and started peppering us with questions. Yeah, kind of interesting. Um, how credible are they in the scientific community? Not at all. Uh, and that's not just sort of a, a, a jaded answer or anything like that. I think that they just don't look upon that as, um, it, you know, what has come out of the scientific community in the last 40 years. They don't look upon that as being as credible as kind of their hands-on experience. So they sort of see themselves as their own kind of brand of science. And so they tell the scientists oftentimes, like, well, you know, you, you haven't touched these animals. You know, we swim with these animals every day with other personalities and that. So it's, you know, and then the scientist community, scientific community says, you know, you're actually so close that you don't see anything. <laughs> so it's the million dollar question. Uh, you know, there's a lot of, uh, a lot of things. I mean, for one, the, the trainers, the, the former trainers from this, film have started a group called Voice of the Orcas. So it's Voto, V-O-T-O, and it's a blog and, and you know, Twitter stuff. <laughs> um, which, yeah, I obviously know a lot about. Um, they, um, they're incredibly, what, what they are is kind of a, almost like a landing pad for what areas of, these, of, the, of this um, issue you would want to get involved with. Um, you know, over the, these two years, we've amassed a ton of information, whether it's, you know, what you can do, you know, whether, you know, whether you don't go to SeaWorld, is that the big message, don't go to SeaWorld? I mean, I think that's kind of an obvious one, but what's coming out now from a lot of trainers is that if you don't go to SeaWorld, that's almost not enough. So you can choose to, to vote with your dollar and not show up there, but what happens when that place loses money is they will take money out of, um, the whales. So the pools would become worse, the whales will have less environmental stimulation than they do now. So um, it's sort of a twofold thing, you know, not going there is huge, but uh, also kind of holding them accountable um, is another big thing. So, you know, eventually we're going to start coming out with a little more information about that. I think we're just so busy making this film and finishing it that um, at some point we hope to kind of engage that question a little, a little further on. And then you're just, you're looking at a bush. And then you see like a tail flap or something like, oh no, it's a lion, you know? And you're just so, it's just, you know, for that reason, I mean, you think to yourself, why doesn't the, why don't the zookeepers like bring some meat out so I can see the lion in action? The point is, is that those animals are not there for us. Those animals at the zoos are doing what they would want to be doing otherwise. That's not to say that all captivities, you know, there are some captive forms of captivity that are great, but I do think that um, what this film speaks to specifically is animals and entertainment and have a sort of really no place for that anymore. So um, that's the message, but you know, I think a lot of people, it's, it's, a, it's a complicated issue. So 
So had some of the trainers not seen Orcas in the wild prior to you? Um, most have not. In fact, most in SeaWorld right now have not seen them in the wild. Why did you choose not to show Don's death? Um, yeah, that was an easy one for me. I think um, there was just no educational value um, for showing that. I think that there would um, there was nothing you couldn't get from the autopsy report that you would get somehow from seeing that death. You know, I want children to be able to see this. You know, for so for for a number of reasons, I sort of um, knew very early on that I would never do 